Welcome to another episode of Waffle TV. My name is Jimmy and I'm here with the fabulous Henry Naylor. Hi, Jimmy. Hello. Nice to meet you. So, Henry, you are doing the show Echoes this yeah, year at the Yeah, play. Yeah. I t- I, I'm normally... Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> t- well, there we go. Uh, but yeah, I normally do comedies up here. I used to be in a double act called Parsons and Naylor and uh, did about 18 years of... Uh, well, no, we did about eight or nine shows, but I've been, you know, coming up to the festival for about 18 years. Yeah. And, and the last two years, I started writing straight plays. So it's been a bit of a departure for me, this, yeah. but... Uh, it's been quite exciting. Yeah. And how, you know, how have you been finding the transition, I guess, into straight theatre? It's, it's interesting, actually. Last year, I was absolutely, it was the first time I'd written a straight play last year. I wrote a play called The Collector, and I was absolutely cacking myself, if right. I'm frank. Uh, uh, mainly because, I, and I think as an artist, it, uh, it's important you do that. It's yeah. important you frighten yourself, <laughs> uh, and it's important you take risks. Otherwise, uh, because I find, certainly for me, if I'm, if I'm scared... <laughs> Then it makes me work an extra bit harder to make sure it, you know you don't look an idiot. Yeah. So uh, I worked very, uh, you know, I worked very hard on that. And it, it was on a topic I was obsessed about. It was about all the abuses in Abu Ghraib, and it became a very topical kind of show that yeah. in a way because like all the 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 CIA admitted it was doing torture techniques just before the festival. So suddenly it became like a re- very relevant and newsy story. This yeah. year I am doing a, a more news-based play, yeah. which is um, which is a comparison between. Uh, uh, jihadi brides of today and Victorian pioneer women. Well, and there's some bizarre and bonkers parallels yeah. between the two two phenomena. So, uh, so y- you know, I thought, right, I'll, I'll write that because I think that certainly in the media, there's a lot of people saying um, they don't understand where the jihadi brides come from. Why would people give up a sort of comfortable life in the West to go and live in a Syrian basement? And I kind of think, well, hang on, there are reasons. These are smart people i yeah. mean why why they're doing it so I, I kind of did a bit of research and found out about it and i was also researching events in, in british india oh, sort of okay. 150 years ago and i thought wow these are really similar yeah. journeys that are happening to the characters so i thought this would make an interesting play okay so uh, the thing that i'm kind of interested in henry is uh why you have this kind of fascination, I guess, with the Middle East and issues out there? It's weird, actually, because, like, for really, I mean, obviously, in the last 20 years uh, and global politics, it's all been about the Middle East. And I'm, and I'm a satirical writer. I've, I've been writing for a lot of satirical news shows, radio shows and, and telly shows. And, and as a result, I, you know, you have to be reading about that every day. So I kind of got a bit obsessed with it. And, and uh, I, I was researching a play about 15 years ago called Finding Bin Laden, which... Um, I wanted to do something set uh, in the Afghan war because the, the weird thing on the telly, watching the, the news events unfold there, you didn't see any dead bodies. Right. And it was a conscious decision by the news networks not to offend taste and decency. And I kind of thought, actually, that was distasteful. I thought that was kind of disrespectful, yeah. really, because if a war has been committed in your name, you should know the implications of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, so I started writing a play called Finding Bin Laden, which is all about how journalists see one thing on the ground and yet report another thing on the telly. And, and, ju- and it just so happened that my old flatmate from university... Oh, God, this is extraordinary. I was researching, uh, uh, researching um, uh, you know, the war, and, and there was this very posh BBC journalist yeah. um, uh, in Kabul, and uh, I was watching this news report, and he was sort of sat there, and he was going, well, um... The bombs are getting much closer. I can, I can hear that. You can probably hear them in the background. They are getting really quite close, actually. Uh, that one was quite really close. And then the next thing in the report, the entire wall of the studio blew off. And he got blown off his chair and he went, Jesus Christ, like this. <laughs> and the next thing that happened was my flatmate ran in front of the camera to see if he was OK. My old flatmate from uni. And I sort of oh couldn't believe this. Yeah. And, I, and, and it turned out he'd become a cameraman. I'd lost touch with him. And I said to him, look, I'm researching this play in Afghanistan. Yeah. Can you get me out there? I want to look around, wow. look around, sort of like you, you know, just see the implications of war for this play because yeah. it was relevant for the for the piece. And so he got me, um, I put me in touch with the BBC fixers, and they showed me around and all this sort of thing. And, and we've got this really charming, urbane Afghan doctor, such yeah. a smart guy, probably being paid about ten dollars a month doing what he did. Uh, but a super guy, and um, he, he was showing us round Kabul and taking us round, round war, you know, war damaged sites, so we could get a feel of the, the thing. And um, he, we went past this sort of ruin on the hill, and he said, "Oh, that's where we beat the Brits." 
And I went, what do you mean you beat the Brits? He said, oh, that's where we, we, we beat the British Empire. And I went, nobody beat the British Empire. <laughs> and he yeah. said, and he said, he said, he said, no, we beat the Brits there. And I, and I didn't know anything about this. And it's kind of been erased from British history. Right. Because it was one of the greatest humiliations of, 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 of the Victorian era. There, there was, uh, the Brits sent a huge um, encampment of soldiers there. And, and at the time, Britain was the superpower of the world to protect India from Russian invasion. And they were using Afghan, Afghanistan as a, as a buffer zone. And so they sent 16,000 people into this cantonment. And um, they thought that the Afghans were quite dosed because they just walked in and set up this encampment and just carried on like they owned the place. You know, they were sort of like boozing, screwing local women um, uh, and, you know, offended local sensibilities. And after a while, you know, Brits would go into town, they would get their throats slit, they'd, um, you know, and then sort of three or four people would get blown up. And, and, and it slowly, this insurgency developed which was really similar to the way the Brits carried on in Afghanistan over, over here. And, and what happened in the end was it became so, you know, it starts off with about one or 200 people revolting. In the end, 50,000 Afghans came around and surrounded this encampment and the Brits basically said, we're not going to win here. Uh -huh. uh, and so they said, look, OK, we'll withdraw. And we'll give you your country back. Uh, on one condition, you just give us free passage back to, to, to India. And they went, all right, yeah, cool, OK. You, you, you just come out of your encampment. We'll let you walk back. And the British sort of came out, middle of winter, it was minus 20 or something absurd. And the Afghans just went, nah. And they just started picking them all off on the way back. And of the 16,000 Britons that fled that encampment, only one made it back to India, one out of 16,000. And so I got obsessed with this story. Yeah. And, and, you know, the Brits have erased it from history. And, and it's a huge source of national pride in Afghanistan that they beat this, this right. superpower. Uh, and, and, you know, they know all the names of the Brits in the same way that, um, you know, the Brits know the names of Goering and Goebbels and, and you know, and, and our great yeah. military triumph. So, I was obviously being really offensive, going, never heard of it, yeah. I didn't know this was going on. Um, uh, you know, so it's a huge source of national pride. And, and so I got fascinated by the story and, and started researching it. And that is basically what happens to the, to, to the Victorian woman in, in the play. She is in Kabul yeah. um, uh, when all these events are, are happening. You know, she's, she's a nice, very clean, uh, very well... Um, a very moralistic woman who's just seeing, you know, husbands and soldiers misbehaving in town and yeah. sort of like her, her, she can't believe that the great British mission that, that's been set up in her mind is just falling apart yeah. and so she she, uh, she witnesses all these events unfold and, that, and that's, you know, that's how I got obsessed with it it's a personal yeah. connection with Afghanistan and a personal you know, you know, so yeah. yeah. You really are kind of going for almost it is an untold story. Do you know what I mean, yeah, I had no yeah, yeah. idea that yeah. that ever happened. That's well, amazing. In a weird way, there's kind of like an untold story with the, the jihadi brides as yeah. well. I mean, sort of like the, there's no real news coverage of it. Yeah. It's such a dangerous place to go out there at the moment. So, you know, that there again is a kind of a, an untold story that needs yeah. needs to be said. So, so yeah, it's it's kind of it's newsy, it's historical, uh, and it it. Um, Seems to be going quite well. We've had three, four star reviews already. Yes. Come on! That's what we want. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely amazing. So, yeah. Fantastic. And where can we find it, Henry? <coughs> Pardon me. Here it's at the Gilda Balloon yep. at five thirty. So Excellent. yeah, every day. Amazing. Amazing. Well, thank you so much What's for that you? story. Thank absolutely you. great. Uh, it's been another episode of Waffle TV, uh, sponsored by Bilmers. Thank you. Got, Jimmy, was was like, that was fascinating. Oh, it's amazing, that was isn't it? Absolutely fascinating. I was like, just like raps, like drop the mic. We'll just, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? That is amazing.